Welcome to the daily online newscast of the Ann Arbor News. I'm reporter Stephanie Murray and today is Tuesday, September 25th. Here are some of the top headlines in today's Ann Arbor News. As the United Auto Workers strike against General Motors Corporation enters its second day today, workers at GM's Willow Run powertrain facility say they hope it will end soon. Auto workers at the sprawling plant in Ypsilanti Township joined their colleagues in walking off the job across the nation on Monday following a breakdown in the UAW's contract negotiations with GM. The UAW said job security and wages are sticking points right now in the talks. Local GM workers told the Ann Arbor News that the mood inside the plant Monday was upbeat and that the strike was orderly when they walked out at 11 a.m. Most said they were not surprised that a strike happened. By 11.30 a.m. on Monday, the parking lots at Willow Run were empty and picketing had begun at the entrances. The Willow Run GM plant employs 2,061 hourly workers, which is roughly half the number it had about five years ago. The factory makes four-speed and six-speed transmissions for vehicles such as the Cadillac DTS, the Buick Lucerne, and the Chevrolet Silverado. Ann Arbor City Council on Monday night approved selling the old YMCA property in downtown Ann Arbor to HDC LLC, which is the developer of the proposed William Street Station project for $3.5 million, as long as HDC meets a series of deadlines set for the project. Council members said deadlines were set because they've grown tired of delays with the project, which was originally proposed in 2005 and is now slated to have a new bus station, a 100-unit affordable housing tower, a hotel tower, and more than 100,000 square feet of commercial and retail space. Still, at least one council member said the developer and the city have invested too much time to stop the project now. HDC representative Bob Jacobson said his company is comfortable with the deadlines and agreed to the deadlines, which begin with an October 15th requirement that Brownfield tax credits and a joint venture with the operator of the hotel both be in place. Jacobson said he hopes to begin demolition of the old YMCA building by early next year. Also in today's newspaper, we'll have stories on the Howell Public Schools Board of Education meeting last night, where an emotional crowd chastised administration officials for not taking proper action in an alleged sexual assault incident that happened in May. A seven-year-old was allegedly sexually assaulted on a Howell school bus in May by two other boys who are ages 11 and 9. The two boys face criminal sexual conduct charges in juvenile court. And the city of Ypsilanti plans to hold three public meetings in October to discuss a proposed city income tax to residents. The city is asking voters in the November 6th election to approve a 1% income tax on residents and businesses and a half percent tax on non-residents who work in the city. The proposal includes several exemptions and would reduce the property tax millage by two mills. The tax would end in six years. And also in tomorrow's newspaper, Chelsea resident John Moogley encourages res readers to give up meat for one day each week on his web blog, Vegetarian Wednesday. And he's gotten quite a following. Moogley says his nine-year-old daughter, Eleanor, began to give serious thought to the plight of animals used for food in June. And he started the web blog, Vegetarian Wednesday, last month. You can find these stories in today's paper, available on newsstands today and online also at www.mlive.com slash Ann Arbor News. And in other stories we're working on for you today, a woman was seriously injured in a single vehicle crash this morning along Dexter Ann Arbor Road in Sio Township. Police said the crash happened just east of Zebrobe, of the Zebrobe intersection rather, at 5 a.m. The woman who was alone in the car was taken to the University of Michigan Medical Center. And as always, you can check back throughout the day for more news and updates on these and other stories. You can find those at www.mlive.com slash Ann Arbor News and click on real-time updates.